Hi guys, this is John here. Today I'll be starting session two of our AI course. And session two looks at how does the human brain identify objects and how do we train the human brain to identify objects. Then in this session, we will look at a concept called as a confusion table, which is basically how do we gauge the amount of confusion that is there and we look at a confusion table exercise and we'll have an assignment. So, so let us get started with this session by looking at a simple example. So here I would like to introduce two of our friends, Jimmy and Sara. Both of them are good friends in school and Jimmy has decided to apply for a competition where he needs to identify colors. So we have our two friends, Jimmy and Sara, and Jimmy is preparing for a color identification competition. So let us understand the rules of that competition. The competition is divided into two rounds, round one and round two. Round one is about identifying one color correctly. So it's all about identification of one color. And if Jimmy wins in round one, then he goes to round two, where he needs to identify three colors. And if he wins round two, then he wins the competition. So the idea is that Jimmy should be able to identify the color with maximum accuracy. So he should make very few mistakes and the same thing is with three colors he has to identify those colors with maximum accuracy so now for jimmy to win this color identification competition let us go ahead and see how does he go about preparing himself so let us go ahead and see how jimmy will prepare himself so just quickly taking a step back, we are trying to understand how do we train a human to identify objects. In this case, we are going to take an example of color identification. And we have our two friends, Jimmy and Sara, and how they will help Jimmy prepare for this color identification competition. So let's go ahead and start. So we have divided Jimmy's learning into five steps. Step one, Jimmy goes to his teacher for practicing questions. If you remember in session one, we had covered the steps for preparing and learning. So step one, Jimmy goes to his teacher. Step two, the teacher trains him using 80 color cards. Now you might be asking me, where did this number 80 come from? This is just an example number. And then the teacher tests Jimmy using 20 color cards. So she teaches him using 80 and tests him using 20. Sarah prepares his result table. So basically Jimmy goes to teacher and she makes him practice questions. She makes him practice 80 questions or 80 colors, 80 color cards. And once he's done, she takes 20 other cards and then decides to test Jimmy. And based on that, Sarah, his friend, prepares his result table. We'll look at those details. And depending on Jimmy's result, Jimmy decides to go back to step one or not, we shall see. So let's get started. So step one, teacher is training Jimmy for identifying the yellow color. So the competition round one was to identify one color, if you remember. And that competition was about one color, which was yellow. So the teacher has a total of 100 cards with her. She divides it into 80 cards for teaching Jimmy and 20 cards for testing or checking 
if Jimmy is learning or not. So this is very important. So let us go ahead and understand this. So first, the teacher will train Jimmy. She teaches him by showing him a card and telling him this color is yellow. So Jimmy starts remembering that. She also then starts telling him this is not yellow because this is blue, but as we are doing just one color, so it's either yellow or not yellow. So she keeps using these 80 cards to teach Jimmy what is yellow and what is not yellow. And then she starts testing Jimmy using the other 20 cards to check, to check if Jimmy has learnt or not. This is very important because if you are not able to check Jimmy's learning, if you are not able to check, how will you decide if Jimmy is ready for the competition or not? So, she uses these 20 cards to check Jimmy is this yellow or is this not yellow and the teacher asks Sarah who's Jimmy's friend to fill something called as a result table and this result table will help us decide whether Jimmy is ready for the competition or not. So let us go ahead and see how this result table is filled. So this result table has four cells, C1, C2, C3, C4. It has two rows and two columns. So let us go ahead and understand this table. So the two rows are yellow and not yellow. The two columns are again marked yellow and not yellow. The four cells are marked as true cells or false cells. So it's true cells or false cells. And I will show you which one is which. So this is the structure of Jimmy's result table. There is a technical term used for this result table. It's called a confusion matrix. Let's ignore this term for now. Let us just call it a simple result table just for now. I will bring this term in later. So now, as I told you, there are four cells. Cell C1 and C3 are called true cells, whereas cells C2 and C4 are called false cells. Let us understand why. Whenever Jimmy gives a right answer, which means if Jimmy is shown a yellow card, He's actually shown a yellow card. And Jimmy answers yellow. Then you fill a true cell. And if Jimmy is shown a not yellow card, so for example, if Jimmy was shown a black card, which is not yellow, and Jimmy answered not yellow, then this is a correct answer because he was shown a black card and he answered not yellow. So these are true cells. And whenever Jimmy gets an answer wrong, we will look at the false cells. So whenever Jimmy gets the answer correct or right, we fill the true cells. And whenever Jimmy gets the answer wrong, we fill the false cells. So let us continue. Just to take a step back, we are at step number three, where the teacher is using the 20 cards to test Jimmy and his friend Sara is helping him fill in this result table. Okay, so let's get started. So the teacher shows Jimmy a yellow colored card and Jimmy's answer is yellow. So do you think this answer is right or wrong 
or should we say if this answer is true or false the answer is true so the teacher showed jimmy yellow and jimmy answered yellow so the answer is true so we will go ahead and fill the number 1 here similarly for card number 2 she again shows him a yellow card and he says yellow so this answer again she shows him a yellow card and the answer is yellow so this answer is correct so this number will increase from 1 to 2 now she shows him for card number 3 she shows him a red card and Jimmy answers not yellow so now it's a not yellow card and Jimmy answered not yellow so we go ahead and fill cell number 3 with 1 because she showed him a not yellow card and he answered not yellow so we go ahead and fill this again for card number 4 she shows him a blue card and he answers not yellow so this number from 1 now increases to 2 as she showed him a not yellow and he answered not yellow so we carry forward these values which will be number 2 here again number 2 so if you see that we have shown Jimmy 4 cards and till now we have filled 4 values here let's continue card number 5 here she shows him a red card and Jimmy makes a mistake and says yellow. So with the previous two answers stored here, the teacher has shown him a red card. Red means not yellow. So she showed him a not yellow and Jimmy answered yellow. So this was Jimmy's answer. So this is a false answer. So we will go ahead and fill one here. Similarly, she showed him for card number 6, she showed him a green card and Jimmy still answered yellow. So, again, here it was not yellow, but Jimmy answered yellow. So, this number 1 increases here to number 2. Now, with card number 7, she shows him a yellow card and Jimmy answers not yellow. Well, this answer is wrong or false. So now can you help me out and say, where does this number get filled? This number would get filled here. The reason is the teacher showed him yellow and Jimmy's answer was not yellow. So they both intersect here and we will fill this cell so if you remember we had said that cells c1 and c3 are my true cells whereas cells c2 and c4 are my false cells so here effectively we keep filling in the values so let us summarize this part where we have a result table with four cells c1 c2 c3 and c4 whereas c1 and c3 are my true cells c2 and c4 are my false cells now whenever the teacher shows jimmy a yellow color and if jimmy answers yellow the answer is right we will fill c1 which is a true cell if the teacher shows jimmy not yellow if the teacher shows Jimmy not yellow and Jimmy answers not yellow then again the answer is true so we will fill this cell. Similarly if the teacher shows Jimmy not yellow and Jimmy says not yellow again so this is again true so you fill this value. Now you keep understanding this for true and false and this is how and this is how Sarah goes about filling Jimmy's result table. 
So after finishing all the 20 cards, Jimmy's results look like this, where he gave seven true answers for yellow on yellow, and he gave eight true answers for not yellow on not yellow. So these are his true or correct answers. But more importantly, he made a total of five mistakes. So his correct answers were 15, which was seven plus eight, but his wrong answers were five. Now, the idea is out of the 20 cards, Jimmy's accuracy is 15 correct answers and five wrong answers. Now we should be worried about the five wrong answers and for a higher accuracy, we want that his wrong answers should reduce. This is very important. So the result table basically tells us what is the accuracy of Jimmy's learning. Okay. So five wrong answers is not acceptable. So now how does Jimmy improve is the question. So we will look at that as part of the next lecture in session two. I hope this lecture was clear where we understood how to fill Jimmy's result table, where we have the true cells and we have the false cells. So I would like that you should go through this lecture again and revise the concepts of true cells and false cells. Now let us look at how Jimmy tries to improve his score in the next lecture. I hope this lecture was clear. I'll see you guys in the next lecture. Thank you.